Hello everyone and welcome back to Zoo Crafting, where I am currently in one of the best places in the zoo, a mossy cavern hidden away inside of the hummingbird exhibit, but I absolutely love this spot, it is covered in moss, there is moss on the ceilings, there is moss on the walls, <gasps> And with a little bit of effort, I could even put moss on the floors. How fun would that be? It would be like a little green haven just gently tucked away behind some of our most adorable of small birds. And you guys may have just heard the call of a much larger bird, a peafowl, in this exhibit too. And if you guys joined us for our live stream that we had this weekend, then you will know what that is all about. So this is the first episode I have recorded after the live stream. So there's a few updates to show you. Also, that was very rude, Hummingbird. You did not need to go and shove Tate. Uncalled for. Uncalled for. Oh, look at the pretty purple one. Gosh. <laughs> You know, just staying in this exhibit is so beautiful. There's so many little nooks and crannies. I mean, look at this little willow leaf hanging out next to this uh, this lovely mushroom. But yes, guys, okay. So for those of you who didn't join us for the live stream, we dug a tunnel. Cue the Avatar digging a tunnel song. And we also came up with some fantastic ideas for 12 dancing princesses made up of maybe cows wearing hula skirts, flamingos wearing, uh, you know, tap dancing, Mm, diamond slippers and we even have a princess snail in the works so that may sound very confusing to all of you I highly recommend checking out the stream it was a lot of fun and I would just like to say that there have been a few updates with um, some new additions here in the zoo that's right we finally have a couple new NPCs actually brought over from our patreon area so Tate let's go ahead and introduce everybody and for those of you who are with the stream and you're like wondering what to the mystery peafowl grew up to be. Let's go check in on that little baby who has indeed grown up here in the hummingbird exhibit surrounded by hummingbird eggs. I really think that this peafowl is going to think that it is a hummingbird now because it grew up amongst all of these ones raining eggs down on their head. But um, as you can see, Unfortunately, the peafowl we hatched on stream that we were so excited would possibly be one of our albino males um, didn't turn out to be a male. In fact, it's a female peafowl. So we will add her over to the peafowl exhibit in just a second. Hey, come back here. Gosh, she's like, no, I'm not a peafowl. I'm a hummingbird. I am a hummingbird. I'm sorry. We're going to take you somewhere where hopefully the hummingbirds will be less likely to rain down like a, a hummingbird omelet on top of your head. What is this nonsense? There are so many hummingbird eggs. I don't even know how to handle all of these eggs. It's just amazing. However, we have a new friend here who will help us to handle all of these eggs. Huzzah! Huzzah! So thanks to the help of my patrons and our other Discordians, we are finally adding in some NPCs back into the zoo. And don't worry, when we have time, we will definitely have opportunities for you too to leave a comment and add in your NPC into the world. I will let you know, uh, a la the very old episodes of zoo crafting we used to have, when we are going to be able to do that. But but today I have two new people to introduce you guys to who are going to help our zoo grow so much, especially because I have no idea what to do with all of these hummingbird eggs. They just keep coming. It's just raining hummingbird eggs everywhere all of the time. I have no idea what to do with all of them. But we have a new researcher who has now come to join the zoo. Researcher Lilac. And Researcher Lilac is actually a, a specialist in hummingbirds. At least that's what her CV said when she uh, sent in her application to work here. So let's go ahead and introduce ourselves to uh, to researcher Lilac and see what she has to say and what she has to trade. There we go. I'm working on a research project about rare species of snails that ride hummingbird beaks. I'm sure they exist. Huh. Snails, you say? Well, I do love snails, but I, I, I could have sworn you were here mostly for the hummingbirds, perhaps? Uh, I'm researcher Lilac. Uh, I heard you need a, sn um, a hummingbird expert. Hmm. I think... I think we've been slightly hoodwinked, but you know what? Somebody who enjoys studying hummingbirds, especially because they're like smacking her in the face. Sorry about that, Lilac. And uh, somebody who can possibly have some useful trades for us is more than welcome in the zoo. So Lilac actually is studying some very rare species of so far mythical snail that ride around on hummingbird beaks. 
This is inspired by one of our wonderful patrons, Osha slash Lilac, who is actually just amazing with snails. She is always sharing some fantastic pictures of the snails that she raises. The garden snails are so cute. The stories that she's able to tell about them are absolutely heartwarming. And so now she has come and appeared in our world so that she can do some snail research and help us out with our hummingbird egg overpopulation problem. And in real life, I am not aware of any snails that ride around on hummingbird beaks, but believe it or not, be beak it or not perhaps, my friend, Oh my gosh, there's another hummingbird egg. Okay, well, and let's go ahead and get a snack. Some simple ramen noodle soup sounds good, actually. Uh, I, this is very, very old ramen noodle soup, but something's better than nothing. Oh my goodness, and so many eggs. What am I going to do with all these eggs? I just, uh, they're just, I'm trying to take care of them. Tate, what are you doing up there? How did you get up there? I'm not going to question it. <laughs> But in real life, there are actually a species of bugs that will ride around on hummingbird beaks. And they are able to transfer themselves so much faster by riding around on top of the hummingbird beaks. They're so tiny. A hummingbird is already very small. Think about how itty bitty these insects are so that they can zip around and they climb off the little flower onto the hummingbird beak when they come to feed. And then they disembark from the hummingbird bird onto the flower when the hummingbird goes to a new flower to feed. And when I was reading about them, it was kind of surreal because at first I was like, I don't know what's so interesting about reading about mites that ride around on a hummingbird beak. That's kind of weird. But then the more I read about them, the more I was like, wait, this is kind of interesting because these little insects will actually ride on the hummingbird beak and they have to make the choice within like a split second if they're going to jump off of the hummingbird onto the flower because hummingbirds move fast. And apparently these mites actually can become quite a problem for the hummingbird's favorite flower. So then the hummingbirds have to travel to more of their favorite flowers because the mites will actually eat the flower nectar, that's what they're there for, and provide competition for the hummingbirds. But the more flowers the hummingbirds travel to, trying to outrace the mites so that they can have more food, the more flowers they spread the mites to. So it's like this arms race between the hummingbirds and these mites. So yeah, that sounds kind of boring, but when you're a biologist, that was absolutely thrilling to read. So researcher Lilac is here to, uh, Tate, do be careful. Tate, 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 Tate! Why are you trying to get on the ceiling? What is on the, is it the screech owl? The screech owl has been there for a while, Tate. It is going to be okay. We leave the screech owl be. I'm sure that it's got important, maybe it wants to eat the hummingbirds if I'm completely honest, but you can't, buddy, that's glass. Please be careful. Oh my goodness. But yeah, so I know that may sound kind of weird, but it is biology. And it is something that the more I read about it, the more it made me super interested. So when Lilac, uh, you know, is going to come and join our zoo as a hummingbird researcher, but she happens to be a passionate lover and researcher of snails as well, I love the idea that she's looking for a mythical species of snail that perhaps rides around on hummingbird beaks. And even though her research is going to have her peering at the beak of each and every Every one of these oh there's another egg each and every one of these hummingbirds searching what lily how are you even in this tree <laughs> in search for her oh my gosh and here's another one in search for her mysterious missing okay lily how did you even do that uh in search of her mysterious missing snails at least she's going to help us, oh my gosh, with this hummingbird egg overpopulation problem. So I'm very grateful to have help, even if she's more here for snails than hummingbirds. So what does researcher Lilac happen to trade? Well, my friends, she does love her snails. So if we bring her some of the snails from Pam's harvest craft, the garden uh, fishing little trap that we can set up or the water gardens that we can break open, she has some beautiful, stunning flowers to trade to us, including the bird of paradise which is one of my favorite flowers and actually one I would love to get and start planting all over the zoo as a decoration piece because I want to start doing more decorative patches around the zoo like we used to do in the old old world and then she also will give you fuchsia which is another like oh my gosh it's one of the most beautiful flowers I think I've ever seen I love fuchsias and I've never been able to really keep them alive because I've not lived in the right climate for them but if you guys have never 
ever seen a fuchsia, definitely look it up. It is one of the most beautiful flowers I have ever seen. And they come down in just this beautiful cascade from potted plants. And I really love them. I would love to know where they're native to. Like, where did they come from? They're just so beautiful. So I very much love fuchsias as well. And you can actually craft them into hanging plants that we could scatter all around the world. And then she will also give you one of my favorites, an appetite, which holds on to the sides of trees. They grow on the side of trees and kind of just absorb the nutrients from the air. And this is a crimson catala, catala, catalia, catalia, who knows? <laughs> And it is a very beautiful one, too, that we could especially decorate over by the jungle exhibit. If we bring her zookeeper experience points by doing chores and tasks around the zoo, then we'll be able to get a water garden from which we might be able to break it open for those snails that she loves. But it's not just about snails with our wonderful researcher, Lilac. She will also trade hummingbird eggs. Thank goodness for unidentified eggs, which are truly becoming one of my favorite things to play with. I am so excited. So we're gonna go ahead and just straight up trade all of those hummingbird eggs that we had jumping around for unidentified eggs that researcher Lilac has happened to stumble on during the course of her research. We can also trade a hummingbird egg, which I think another one, truly, I'm pretty sure another one just like popped down on the ground a second to go beside me. <laughs> But we can trade the hummingbird eggs for hummingbird bushes or for apricot lupine. And these two are types of flowers that hummingbirds actually enjoy in real life. The hummingbird bush, imagine that, is named because hummingbirds love it. And lupine is one of many varieties of flower that hummingbirds love. And if we bring a whole bunch of zookeeper experience points, then she will give us another hummingbird feeder to help us feed our exploding population of hummingbirds. And then if we bring her some money, then she'll give us some lilacs, true to her name. And this is kind of an interesting thing that I was quite curious when I spoke with her and found out that this is what she likes to do. But if we bring her a dozen potatoes, she'll give us a bouquet of potatoes? And I'm not sure what kind of romantic inside joke that could possibly be referring to that only a few of you are probably going to remember. But cough, cough. Yes, we can now get a bouquet of potatoes from Researcher Lilac if we bring her a dozen potatoes. Also, she will take spaghetti for a whole bunch of money and tempura udon for a whole bunch of money because making udon is extremely difficult because I have to make it literally from scratch. If we are gonna, like udon is a multi-stage, multi-day spaghetti udon. Oh dear, that sounds like some sort of fusion food that people up, up on. <laughs> that also sounds like some sort of fusion food people would get up in arms about. But if we go to the tempura udon, in order to make the tempura udon, I have to have boiled udon, I have to have shrimp tempura, scallions, and udon noodle soup from a specific mod that would take a very long time to do. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure, Lilac, if I'll be able to provide that to you. But if you give me a little while, I should get noodle noodles shop opened up and then you will be able to have some ramen noodle soup from my cat noodle doodles. He's very good, very good at making the ramen. Uh, oh dear, see, and already we're covered in eggs again. <laughs> I didn't even have a chance to leave the room yet. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, I didn't even have a chance to leave the room yet and already we're, we're surrounded by eggs. But that's okay. That'll give us a chance. Pardon me, Lilac. It appears you are looking for snails down there to grab another ident unidentified egg. Huzzah! 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 That is so exciting. <laughs> But also you guys may notice my inventory is like a thousand percent full right now And that is because we went on a gigantic mining expedition We actually went mining from inside the Uolji Research Center all the way under my house Over to this river over here and then we popped out over to this river over here Only to find out to connect the egg research center and my laboratory Was a very simple process of basically just turning left. It was kind of of hilarious of uh, an hour's worth of digging turned out all I had to do was like walk 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 left and then we were at my research center they were much closer together than I thought they were so it was pretty funny 
But all right, so that is Researcher Lilac, and she is our newest member of the zoo. As the months go by, you will see more and more of our wonderful patrons trickling on in as they help to bring life, excitement, their favorite foods and animals to the zoo. And we will also hopefully have plenty of opportunities for all of you to be able to submit your name to become new NPCs here in the zoo in the future. Just, it's a lot more work than it looks like on the surface, and we definitely definitely need to expand our zoo in order to make room for everyone. Ah, so on that note, Tate, come my boy. Where are all of my other dogs? I think I saw, okay, Lily was over here a second to go. And I think Alia somehow teleported herself back into the Oology Research Center. And I actually wanna do, oh my goodness. Little hummingbird, come on, come on. I don't have, okay, you're gonna let all the other hummingbirds out. So let me go ahead, oh dear, my, my everything is a mess. All right, hang on. I've got to catch this hummingbird and then I've got to release him over here and then let's wiggle out Okay, puppies, please teleport to me. Is that a hummingbird egg? There was a hummingbird egg outside the hummingbird exhibit. There are so many eggs. Oh my gosh <laughs> All right, let me put this away Ooh, but yeah, and speaking of like my everything being cluttered, some of you guys have been leaving comments that you would absolutely love me to spend a few hours sorting everything like all throughout my entire zoo. I 1000% agree with that, but trust me guys, as soon as I sort it, it's a mess again. <sighs> so I'm just not sure what we're going to do. I've thought about some sort of elaborate system with pipes and good job, Tate, that was a good teleportation. Kind of startled me, but good. Uh, eight out of 10. 8 out of 10. Okay, okay, fine. Here, 9.999997. Uh, 9 9 How about 10.800? And two fish. Is that good? That's a good boy. All right. I felt bad telling him 8 out of 10. Who am I to judge? I don't teleport. He does a great job. Uh, but yes, so many of you have asked, Siri, please, will you sort your inventories? And to that, my friends, I say, I wish I knew how. So we may start working on some sort of elaborate sorting system, but definitely keep an eye out and make sure that you have the, I hate to say this, but the little bell if you want to know when we're going to be doing live streams. Apparently live streams are only going to start being notified with notifications turned on and the little bell turned on. Which again, I never say to do that because I, I want you guys to not have to be spammed with a bazillion videos that I make. But I think some chill, relaxing, soothing sorting streams would definitely be right up our alley how we're going to sort those things if I could build some sort of elaborate mysterious um, recycling system that could possibly take care of everything who knows probably not that would use way too many pipes there's thousands of items in Zudesia but I don't know maybe you guys could come up with some ideas or even just knowing like rocks plants you know, even even just the basics and taking two extra seconds to put things where they belong would help all of our blood pressure go down. All right, hello. Hello, Peafowl. I have a new peahen come to join you. Yes, you're all very noisy and you have a new friend. She thinks that she is a hummingbird. Oh dear, and we have somebody, somebody has been digging up ants. Okay, you guys all be nice to the ant, okay? Uh, oh okay. <laughs> They're just like, they're so noisy when we come in here. And Keeper Mitchie looks like she's trying to push Oh my goodness, I think she's trying to gently push Leo out and all of the other peafowl out of the chairs so that our patrons to the zoo can actually use this area. Oh, but, oh dear. All right, and I have a couple mushrooms who have somehow meandered their way in. I hope they didn't fall off. Oh, what's going on here? Who knows? I hope they didn't fall off Mushroom Island, but let me just go ahead and off you go. Off you go, wild mushroom. There you go. No need to be in there with the noisy peafowl. One day, hopefully, I will be able to train them not to make so much noise. All right, we'll come over here. There you go, buddies. I think you're gonna be much happier being able to wander the zoo like this, truly. But yeah, so yeah, I am thinking about how we could try to organize things a little bit better in the zoo. I'm open to any ideas you guys might have. Uh, I think that having the zookeeper stations set up like we do, where they're just kind of scattered through the world, and I might be able to take like a couple extra minutes. There we go. A couple extra minutes to like walk into them. And then let's make like more chest. And you know, maybe I could just back here, make sure that I have my chest labeled. So it could be like, like, you know, plants here, rocks here, 
Um, it could be like, for instance, <laughs> blaze powder. Oh dear. It could be um, essentials here. Oh my goodness. See, where do you begin when you have this much stuff to organize all of it? Like, I, I, how do you even how do you even start to organize your cake apart from your amylite shells and your dinosaur leg bones? <laughs> But you know what? I'm gonna give it a noble try. Um, so let me go ahead and make a whole bunch more more planks and then we're gonna make a few chests. There we go. Okay, I want maybe a couple more chests. But yeah, this is just on my mind because a few of you guys have been leaving comments about it. I totally understand where you're coming from. It's just really hard to actually follow through on it. So for future uh, future live streams, we may actually spend a lot of time just kind of relaxing, taking some deep breaths, sorting through everything. Because for some reason, a lot of people find uh, live streams where we spend some time like sorting our chest to be very, very relaxing. And I, I get it because, no, you know, it's just a little calmer. Whoops, almost chiseled that fall or almost knocked down that fossil patch. It's, they're just a little bit calmer. Everybody is just kind of able to relax a little bit more. So I totally get where that is coming from. So, all right. I think we'll go ahead and we'll make like a rock dumping chest. So this would be uh, rocks, <laughs> rocks and stones. There we go. And then we'll have a, uh, let's do like a plant. So plants, uh, plants and let's see. Plants and seeds. There we go. All right. And how far does that get us? And then maybe like dirt and carpenter material, like uh, dirt, dirt, uh, dirt, wood, and let's see, maybe all the bits and bobs. So dirt, wood, and nails. Kitchen sink. Let's just say kitchen sink, because that'll be like all of the construction material basically so if we were going to just clear what we have we could be like that's a rock uh and then we could be like uh uh cool miscellaneous items <laughs> there we go cool miscellaneous items which would be hey that's a potato seed that's a seed seed no wait the seeds go up here it literally says seeds no siri this is why i cannot be trusted this is why that's a fossil this is a cool amber piece which could be i mean i guess and i get really excited because i'm like oh but amber i guess that's okay over here but it's not really a stone not really oh dear and then it's like but maybe i want to eat the food Oh my, do you see where everything starts going downhill, guys? And what about dog food? Now I need like an extra chest where I could have like a, a little kitchen area in here somewhere. And it could be like, oh, this is the dog's food. This is Siri's food. Maybe I need a little resting station. So we could have a little catch, like a little kitchenette right over here. And we could have a chest for the dogs so that they could have a little bit of food. And then we could have a chest for me, like a fridge. And have to eat what's in the fridge. In fact, that actually sounds like a brilliant idea to make another fridge. Because <laughs> the fridges are really cool. And to make like a fridge with a bunch of iron and a furnace. And I have to eat what's in the fridge instead of just have a gigantic chest full of random food that just keeps getting added to. And we could even have like a little cutting board. A little mini kitchenette would be maybe a nice idea. And I'm even going to make sure... Then we have some some puppy food too. So we'll, we'll come over here. In fact, instead of instead of putting like a whole chest down for puppy food, you know what we should do? We should make a dog food bowl. And then when I'm in here and like doing work, the dogs will literally eat from. So what about dog food? Huh? Oh wait, is it like dish? Maybe? No puppies. Let's see. Uh, doggy, I know, there we go. It's food bowl, there we go. So if we get some iron and a bone, we can make a new food bowl, and then we can go ahead and put it down there and put the extra dog food in there. So, all right, I think we'll, <laughs> we'll get there eventually. But yeah, I'm, I'm gonna give it a good effort, guys. I'm gonna give it way more of an effort than I have been giving it, and we'll just see what happens. But all right, so let's see with that. Oh, Tate's over here, Lily is following me. And we have our cute little blue garden over here. All right, working on hummingbird eggs. But yeah, that's why my inventory is an absolute mess right now. We were doing all of that mining. I would love to do more mining with you guys. I'm very excited to have our new snail researcher here. Oh my gosh. <laughs> there are so many eggs everywhere. 
<laughs> just scattered. Xenia, what are we going to do? It's just eggs, eggs, and more eggs. Oh my gosh. This is this is quite quite amazing. Quite egg amazing. Can I just can I please okay, there we go. And I can get one more unidentified egg. Oh my gosh, it is just so wonderful to have you here, Lilac. And I tell you what, your love of udon is making me want to get Agent Noodle's Noodle Doodle Shop set up ASAP. Oh my goodness, and there's another egg. Well, you know what I'm going to do with this egg? I'm going to get myself a bird of paradise. Wait, that's snails. Okay, I'm going to get myself... <laughs> An apricot lupine, which is quite lovely if you ask me. And we'll go ahead and put right there. Unfortunately, on top of some ground cover I didn't see till the last moment, but it looks wonderful. But alright guys! Whoo! Why is there an experience bauble? No, my hummingbirds! Is this why they're laying eggs? They only live two to five years and so many of you looked that up and I am so proud of all of you for looking that up So you are definitely my fantastic pixologist and this is going to be wonderful I can feel the old-school zoo crafting flowing in my blood again That sounds a little creepy when I say it like that, but you guys know what I mean But all right, so I've been avoiding going into the Uology Research Center because we have a new friend to introduce you to waiting in there too but once we come back next time, we will not only introduce ourselves to her, but we will resume our current projects. A miracle, I know. And continue on with expanding the zoo, because there is so much to do in the zoo. And I'll see you guys next time. Remember, everybody, stay curious. <laughs> Bye, guys.